it's a big sacrifice to do what we do. I mean, it's you sacrifice your personal life because you're never home. It's seven day a week job, but then again, it's what we love. It's there's nothing I'd rather do. There's nothing I, else I want to be around all the time. It's and I feel like the luckiest kid in the world to say my life revolves around Supercross seven days a week. I got into Supercross? Well, um, pretty much played baseball my entire life uh, from the time I was eight years old. And I didn't go to my first Supercross race until 98 when it was back at Sun Devil Stadium because I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, so that was our local race. I remember walking in the stadium smelling, back then it was all 252 strokes and just smelling all the premix and hearing 20 bikes just hauling ass around the track. I was hooked right when I walked in the stadium. I didn't have any friends that ever rode or anything. I still just kept playing baseball all through high school. But when I was 13, my grandma bought me Krusty Beam of the Dirt 1 for my birthday. And that movie I got totally hooked on. Watched it every single day. I couldn't wait to get home from baseball practice to throw it in. And um, became a fan of all those guys. I was back with Metzger and Emig and Deegan and that's when freestyle first started blowing up, and um, that sealed the deal. That really got me hooked. I always wanted a motorcycle once I started getting in the movies and all that, but um, I was pretty decent at baseball, so my parents, you know, they dedicated their lives to helping me out with baseball, and it was seven days a week, just like motocross kids coming up. That's all they do, seven days a week, so. Baseball was the focus of our family. I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship to go play in Oklahoma. While I was in Oklahoma, um, a girl I knew was on the softball team playing at the same college and she knew I was into uh, Supercross and all that stuff and told me her boyfriend rode and said, she, said he did Supercross and um, I said, well, I want to meet him. So we went to his house and he was the real deal. I mean, as far as being pro and all that, he had a Supercross track with lights and full motocross track and so I was in heaven once I showed up there. And um, him and I hit it off, became really good friends. That was Colt Humphrey out of Morris, Oklahoma. I ended up quitting baseball and running a pit board at his house every day while he was turning laps. So I felt so behind in school that I couldn't even go back and try and graduate if I wanted to. So once I got that first opportunity to get in the industry and go do that, since I already thrown baseball out the window in school, I knew I needed to focus all my time and energy in the Supercross and arena cross and all that. My goal is to get to Supercross, but started out in arena cross. And um, did that with him for a season, which he was teammates with uh, Tom Hoffmaster. And Tom and I became really good friends. To this day, we're great friends, and his family is like my second family. They're great people. Tom um, was doing a team the following year and needed a driver, so he hired me on the drive. And then I ended up uh, winning Transport Driver of the Year in 2008, which was a goal of mine from the first round of Arena Cross, because I knew they had that award up for grabs, and I figured if I'm going to do a job, I might as well do the best that I can at it and try and get an award. And, and then 
Kevin Merritt at Tamer Bill at MX um, kind of caught wind of my name before the 09 Supercross season. He was with the Hooters Moto Triple X team and he needed a driver so he called me and asked if I was interested in driving and obviously I was. That was my first ticket into being around Supercross and out of the arena cross world. We started out as a West Coast Lights team and moved to 450 and then the following year, 2010, um, Jägermeister and KTM teamed up together to do the halftime show with uh, Metzger, Bartram, Disler, and Al. And they contacted Kevin to use his truck because they needed a truck to drive. And Kevin put in the contract that I had to be the only driver. So I got thrown into that Jägermeister deal through Kevin. And uh, I contacted Tom Hoffmaster to see if they needed a driver because I knew they had a semi and were running a team for Supercross and outdoors and X Games, so I knew it would be a full year gig. And he got me in contact with Mike Duclos, the owner of Rock Over Yamaha out of Wisconsin. And uh, Mike and I started talking and said he'd entertain the idea of me driving and told me to shoot him over a resume. And obviously everything worked out. And here we are now in my hometown and 